guests know Grace really well. And those of you that are in Southtown Club know Grace really well as well. She's the director of our local service project. And my, my thing about Grace is that she's got so many plates spinning because if we need somebody to put the recording of this meeting on our YouTube channel, it's Grace. If we need somebody to step in and help with the polio fundraiser, it's Grace. So anything you need, just call Grace. No, <laughs> I think she's speaking out. So anyway, Grace, I'll turn it over to you before I tell everybody to call on you to volunteer. Okay. I've got to fix a few things here. I need to share screen as, sorry about Do that. Do you need me to make you a co-host or are you already? Oh, I am, I am. Okay. One second. Okay. My glasses aren't working. Oh man. <laughs> okay, where is it not working? Let's see. I just went to the eye doctor and I don't need glasses still. Oh. Yay. Oh my goodness. So the problem is when you're hosting and you're sharing screen and you're trying to get a PowerPoint up, it's a little tricky, but right, I'm going to share screen and then put on the PowerPoint. So that's why I'll And make it. sure you set, share the sound if you have sound. I don't have sound, so that'll be fine. Okay. Because I've done that and then I forgot to share the sound and I had to back up. Okay, everybody unmute or mute yourself, please. Okay. I'm hoping that you're seeing the presentation and not the notes and all that. Are you seeing the presentation? Okay, great. All right, well, I wanna tell you about Oregon Real Estate Investors Association. And of course we've been doing it COVID-19 style. This is, the, my members have seen this slideshow quite a bit, but well, Oregon RIA is in Eugene, we cover Eugene, Springfield, Albany, Corvallis and Lebanon and we've added on Bend during COVID. Well, right before COVID, but now it works really well with being on Zoom. You know me, I'm Grace. Uh, I'm the founder of Oregon RIA. So we call it RIAs and I'll tell you about that more later. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a landlord. I, I'm a flipper, in case you've heard of flipping homes. And I also am a note investor, which is a side thing in real estate. I can tell you about our meetings. Last week, we had a note school from um, Texas through Zoom. And note school is a great big organization that teaches creative financing for acquisitions of real estate, as well as how to invest in non-performing notes, performing notes, and, and how to invest across the country. Brian Lochner was our speaker, and he ran a Saturday class for us. And then two days ago, Dan Grace, Jackson, Grace, we can see your next slide. Well, that's why I asked if it was on your share screen. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And somebody mentioned, Joelle mentioned that. And I, I wasn't even looking at it. Well, but now, now, I, now that I, I see it, I wanted you to know. I can fix it now. Now that it's up. Thank you. Now is, that you know. Is it correct now? Yep. Says yes. Okay. Thank you it's very correct. much. Dan Gandhi. Yes who is a marketing mastermind in our group, and he's here today, and you'll get to meet him in a little bit, is um, a professional marketing person for real estate, high-end real estate agents. Hi, Tony. Welcome. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> and so that's a, a third Tuesday of the month meeting we have. And then on the third Thursday of the month, we do our Bend Area Invest, which is a very difficult market to get into. And so we talk about how to get into that through uh, manufactured homes, actually. Uh, and then on the fourth Wednesday or the last Wednesday of the month, we have our members only mystery meeting and you, the members find out where that's gonna be maybe a day before or the same day or a couple days before usually. And what we do is we uh, go to each other's projects usually and, uh, or have a party. We always have a party afterwards. Well, like go to a restaurant when restaurants are open, that is. <laughs> it's a fun, fun group. Uh, and then on the coming up on June 1st or June 6th, the first Thursday of the month, we'll do our deal deep dive. And um, 
go in, somebody will present a deal or several people will present deals and talk about how they did it and create a financing and or answer questions and that kind of stuff. We have a lot of new members. That's great too. And then we'll be back to our main monthly meeting where we have a guest speaker, but this time it will be a member. It's a, a real estate attorney and a state attorney, Stephanie Dolan, who just moved into the area, leaving the fires behind. And then I just wanted to mention that our plan is to be in person on the month of July. And at our main meeting will be July 13th and we'll be back at the Hilton Garden Inn. Our motto is together we're better. And we all work together and help each other. Uh, I believe that real estate investing is not a solo sport, it's a, a team sport. And this is something we do at our main meeting where each member uh, will introduce themselves and tell their haves and wants. Has like they might have something they wanna uh, sell or they're looking for some real estate, a certain type or whatever, or a contractor or whatever. And so at this time, what, what I wanna do is share this, uh, open up this and call on my members to tell, instead of their haves and wants, tell, tell you guys why they are, uh, members of Oregon RIA. All right, so I'm gonna start with Jeanette Montagu, who was the first person on the day. She's working, all the members yeah. might Thank you, Grace. while you're waiting. So, all right, I was having trouble unmuting, you know. Um, uh, Jeanette Montague, Farmers Insurance. I was a landlord when I first joined, and now I do my real estate investing the lazy way. I let Precision Capital do all the work for me, and I sit back and draw my six and a half or seven percent interest. It works for me because I'm working 60 hours a week. I'm a farmers insurance agent, so farmers owns foremost, who happens to be the leading insurer of specialty dwellings. Specialty include flips, vacant, landlord, RVs, boats, motorcycles, just about any kind of specialty thing you could look for is covered foremost insurers. Um, vacant homes are tough. Most carriers won't touch them. Foremost does, their rates aren't cheap, but they're reasonable for vacant homes. I also do flood insurance. I'm recently appointed through Neptune, which is a private flood insurer and about a quarter of the cost of FEMA. So if you need flood insurance, be sure and check with me because I can get you a, an A-rated company that doesn't cost you like FEMA does. Um, and that's what I do. Thank you, Jeanette. Now I'm calling on Mike. My name is Mike Ritzy and I've been a Rotarian for like 25 years. Uh, I was started in the Midwest and, and I'm now a member of the Eugene Rotary Club. Uh, 2019 was the culmination of a five-year plan where I paid off a uh, regular rental and uh, was my sixth year as an Airbnb host, but I'm on four websites. And uh, it, it's one of the premier properties in town. Uh, we're booked mostly year round and this year probably gonna gross between 40 and 50. Um, I do private money lending and I've actually found a little niche uh, in the legal cannabis industry, which has no access to banking and some incredible interest rates. Um, and from all the proceeds, I try to do all the good I can in the world. I'm just about to fill out an application for the Bur Burrito Brigade, uh, but I've been a uh, Egan Warming Center overnight supervisor for uh, seven years now. Uh, next Wednesday, I give my 204th lifetime blood donation, uh, and I've been working rotary volunteer registration at the fairgrounds for vaccines for the last three months every Sunday. Um, I just do a lot of stuff. People ask me, why do you do all these things? I, well, I'm making up for a very sinful youth. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, let's Dan Gandy, are you ready? 
Cool. I'm Talk ready. About yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, I am uh, Dan Gandy. I am a broker, investment broker uh, here in town, as well as a real estate marketing consultant. I, I am a partner in a technology company that builds websites and strategy for real estate agents across the U.S. We got about 15 employees. Um, and I'm also an investor myself. Um, I like to invest in multifamily, multi-unit properties, uh, some fix and flip, but uh, other creative financing and, and type of acquisition deals and helping low-income people find good places to live at an affordable price. So um, yeah, and Grace has been awesome, kind of put me under her wing when I moved to Oregon and we've been able to collaborate and build a good network of people and help people that uh, are in need. So super, super excited to be here. Uh, Dan, Dan forgot to say that he's absolutely brilliant and he's got a really good heart. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> so true. Uh, Stacy. Hi, guys. Stacy Dehart with Icon Real Estate Group. Um, my reason for RIA. Let's see. When I first started with RIA, I was um, working with Momentum Property Solutions. That was my in, uh, flip company. And I had flipped my first house and that was quite an adventure and realized that that's probably not my forte. So I still stay in the group because being in the know is how I can be best to help my clients who are looking for properties like that. And so that helps. And then it's just like a matchmaker kind of thing. So that's kind of fun. And I do have an Airbnb. So I'm also a good resource for the Airbnb community and Let's see. I think that's it. Oh, and Grace and I have done game night. So that's always fun. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Stacy's always ready to show a property. You need to get in. She's there. <laughs> uh, Patricia, how about you? Um, hi, I, um, I'm delighted that Grace asked me to be one of her guests today. Um, I'm one of those folks, I have a little Venn diagram overlap as I am also a Rotarian. Uh, I moved out here from Philadelphia in the middle of the pandemic and, and uh, I, I reached out to Grace because I realized <clears throat> as a member of RIA, I got some straight email that, that she mentioned it and I said, oh, I'm looking for a new Rotary home. And so she has introduced me to, to you all, I'm delighted. Um, I'm also a, a real estate investor, uh, full-time. Um, I'll tell you, I, uh, I, I had a bit of a boondoggle. I, I decided to go to medical school and become a physician first. So I was an MD and, and uh, I am an MD and, and practiced medicine, family medicine up until about 2010. I did that in Philadelphia um, and uh, then decided that, that that was not the best fit for me. And uh, I changed um, career paths. Um, I had done some, some uh, flipping before uh, in my early 20s. Um, in San Jose's Almaden Valley. So I, I sort of circled back to the investing pathway. Um, I have flipped dozens of houses. I never want that job again. And uh, <clears throat> I'm, I primarily am a buy and hold investor. Um, so, and, and I like to work in the single family home space um, in the small multifamily home space. Um, and uh, I, I love fixing up houses. Um, but I also am a note investor, so I do that. I do private money lending. Um, I do some coaching as well. And I uh, recently just launched a, a large private equity real estate investment fund um, that uh, is primarily focused in Portland. And I have two others, um, three others actually, um, that I'll be doing next year, one in Iceland, one in St. Lucia, and then some senior living opportunities down in Texas. So that's what I do. So. Um, the reason why I joined RIA is um, it, the real estate investors among us will recognize this phrase. <clears throat> People say that your net worth is your net work. And when I have um, uh, new investors who want me to coach them and, and mentor them, I always tell them, you need to join your local RIA. That's step one. And if there's a market outside of where you live, where you'd also rather invest, you have to join that RIA as well, because that's how you connect with people. Um, you know, it's... Uh, I, I have a list of, of, if I need a roofer, a painter, a home inspector, a title guy, a, um, an attorney or something like that, it's always my network I go to. And the re um, wherever in the markets that I'm invested in, I, I have contacts with local folks on the ground. <clears throat> and uh, there's a famous podcast, two guys, um, Robert and Russell, the real estate guys radio show. And they say, you know, you live where you want to live, where, but you invest where the numbers make sense. 
Well, the only way I would invest where the numbers make sense is an area where there's a RIA because it's that strong. This is, um, this is, this is my, my, my varsity team, wherever I'm investing, it's always the RIA that I call on first. I have, you know, cold called presidents, vice presidents, or the leadership of any given RIA I'm interested in. And, and we're a really a fun bunch. We love to talk about deals. We love to talk about our, our markets, our industries, and we're always happy to connect um, each other with, with whatever resources we need. So all that's to say that I'm thrilled to be part of the Oregon RIA. I joined the Portland RIA. I'm still a member of the RIA back in uh, outside of Philadelphia, and I can't say enough good things about it. So even if you have a passing interest in real estate investment, this should be your first membership stop. Thank you. And Patricia is going to be our first speaker when we're back in in together in July. In I'm July. so excited. I know. So right? excited. We can get here. Tonight. It's gonna be great. Uh, yeah. Tony is just is our newest member who joined and it lives in Hawaii. So I want to hear from Tony. Aloha. Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a very new member. Um, I uh, bought my first investment property in Waikiki early in the, the 2000s, 2002, and uh, the bug. Uh, got me. I, I, I had so much fun with it. It was a, a fix and flip and I did all the work myself. We call it sweat equity, uh, fixed it up and sold it. And with that, I was able to buy uh, the place that I live in now that's much larger than I probably could have ever afforded otherwise. And I raised my kids. Um, my oldest is actually graduating this year and going to the University of Oregon, moving to Eugene. So that's the reason why I, I've been a member of our local real estate investor club for many, many years. And the one thing that we always agree on is, is uh, like Patricia just said, if you're going to be investing in an area, you definitely have to join the RIA in that area and network with those people. Because when you help people, the, the, the goodness goes around. And uh, so that, that's the first thing that I did. We're going to be going over um, to visit in a couple of months. I've never been to Eugene, but I'm very excited to meet the team. And I really like what I see. It looks like a powerful and loving team. Uh, and I can't wait to get started. Great. Well, Tony, I, I, I expect Grace is going to um, pull us all together for a little meet and greet when you're here. So I'll put that on her shoulders. We'll, 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 get, we'll awesome. have a party. And thank you so much for being so <laughs> sweet, Grace. I've, I've had a wonderful time talking to you and help, helping you with all the technical difficulties. You've been amazing. <laughs> thank you, Tony. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen again, if I can do it correctly. Uh, and hopefully I'm showing the real PowerPoint. I'm checking for nods. Okay. <laughs> and... Um, I, this is a screen that I show off and reason to join RIA, but I think these guys said it way better than I can, but this is how much it costs to join the RIA and these are dollars per year for, except for that, uh, the bottom one that's, it says a monthly one. So for a single person, 150, you call 200, small business, 300, that kind of thing. And a vendor membership, like we have a vendor membership thing where, and all our vendor members right now are, are, are hard money lenders actually. And Seton Funds is, is uh, pretty much our favorite around here because it's the local one. And, uh, and then of course, I have a YouTube site where people can catch up on the uh, meetings and recordings that have happened during Zoom. Um, so what I wanted to let you know about is how it all started. I started Grateful Nuts Homes in 2010 after being in a, in a sales position where I had no more customers because of the... Uh, crash <laughs> that we experienced. So uh, I um, went to a training and there I heard about uh, RIAs and RIA stands for Real Estate Investors Association. And the Portland one is called the Northwest RIA. And so I went up there and visited it and started going to meetings in Portland four times a month, basically one every week, driving up to Portland during traffic and coming back. I would say I could get there. It would take me three and a half hours to get the meeting and two hours to get home, basically, every once a week. Um, and then because of my uh, dedication, I was noted by the, that Ria that um, I should start one in Eugene. The president asked me of that club to start a group in Eugene. So I started a meetup and I, under the North Korea umbrella started meeting in anywhere we could meet for free, basically. And we got moved often. <laughs> but, uh, and then they elected me to the board of directors at Northwest Rhea 
And then by 2014, they elected me as president of the Northwest Korea, and that was like a full-time job getting no pay. At the same time, like a year later, I became the president of the Eugene Opera for some, some of you guys that remember that. So it was like a 70 hour no pay job and my investment activity was way down. I bought my first uh, fourplex in 2012, uh, did my first flip in 2014. And a flip, I'm gonna, in case you guys don't know, a flip is uh, buying a rundown house, fixing it up and selling it. That's all that a flip is. Uh, in my RIA meetings back in the early days, some people that you know were my guest speakers like Bill Slattery and John Brown were guest speakers at our main monthly meeting. And uh, that they really helped me out a lot. Uh, I think uh, uh, Rick Duncan also sent someone to be a speaker for one of those early meetings on appraisals. Uh, let's see. I did end up leaving the Northwest RIA after being president um, because I wanted to start my own RIA down here in Eugene. So I started, I turned it into a company instead. That's it. Um, I was gonna tell if we have time about, I got five minutes to give you a little update on the, uh, market, the real estate market, the real estate market in Eugene and everywhere in Oregon basically is hot, hot, hot. And meaning that the prices are so high that it's hard to buy a house. In fact, um, a real estate agent in Bend at Tuesday night's meeting said, she reported that, I'm trying, I'm switching stuff out here, that she listed a house in Bend All the offers are coming in cash, by the way, these days, and I don't have to get to that too. But she said she got a cash offer, $50,000 over the asking price from a, from a Californian for that house. And that was the only offer. And they didn't even bother contacting the listing agent to see if there were other offers in, in order to compete. It is like, this is what is going on. People are just so desperate to buy houses is that they are just throwing out cash offers, $50,000 over the price. And this is like a, a $400,000, $450,000 home, I think she said it was, and so it went for, or I actually don't remember, maybe Dan remembers, but it, 50,000, it was substantial. Um, i am got an article here that <laughs> talks about how, how in Portland area, uh, the uh, cash offers are all coming in. The I saw a house here in Eugene that sold for, it was listed for 350 and it sold for 450, like that. And my also thought is that because this is happening, this is happening because people are moving away from the cities, the big cities and learning that they can work from home now because of COVID, that's what COVID has done. People are working from home. So office buildings, you'll see a lot of commercial um, properties up for sale soon is my thought. Uh, the way we do it as RIA members, how do we get into houses? How do we get into investment properties and that kind of stuff is through creative financing. I would suggest this is an example of creative financing. If somebody here is looking or you know somebody who's looking for a house and they now have to give cash offers because the seller wants it to close fast when they know they can get cash offers is to get a hold of a private money lender or a hard money lender to provide that cash up front and they're able to close in a week or two rather than one or two months because that's how long it takes when you've got mortgage involved and then refinance it after you take possession with the mortgage loan, which you know is at low rates, 2%, 3%, that kind of thing. Um, I wanna open it up to questions now. Yeah, let's take a couple minutes for questions of Grace or her friends. Grace, uh, is Ria, because there's chapters all over, is it a franchise, is it an association? What, what is the nature of the organization? 
that's that's a good question. Thanks, Mike. Uh, so it is there is a national RIA, and many RIAs are members of the national RIA. I my RIA is not a member of the national RIA. There are real estate investment clubs which are national. And it is a member of a real estate in, in, uh, club, a REIC. We call these REICs, and then there's RIAs. <laughs> so, um, but the REIC club doesn't provide very many, uh, doesn't provide a whole lot. So, but they are in Canada. They are all across, in many, many communities across the United States. I see John Fanner had his hand up, yeah. and then Kathy. What's the definition of hard money? Okay, a hard money loan is uh, a company who has private investors and, and like J Jeanette said, she's lending her money to Precision Capital. Precision Capital is a hard money lender. They're a great company here in Eugene. But so then the hard money is lent out at maybe 9% to 12% to 14%. 15%, 16%. In Mike Brenzian's world of cannabis, it's a lot higher percentage. <laughs> so. Sometimes 20% or more. Yeah. Wow. Kathy. So two questions. First, what is note investing? What does that mean? And second, for Patricia, what's she doing in Iceland? Iceland. <laughs> okay. So Go ahead, Grace. You first. Yeah, well, uh, Note investing is investing in paper. It's investing in mortgages. It's investing in seller financing. It's buying somebody else's paper. So, so if if a note is available, they're sold all the time. Like your mortgage gets sold maybe three uh -huh. times in your lifetime of having that mortgage, maybe five times. Uh -huh. That is a note being sold. Patricia, okay. go ahead. So and I'll just pick it back, Kathy, quickly. So um, everybody understands what a mortgage is. The mortgage and the note go hand in hand. Um, uh, There's slightly different words depending on what state you're in, but everybody, I think, understands the basics. So the mortgage is a financial tool, a legal tool that says you can use my house as collateral. I say that that's okay. The note is literally the IOU. They go together when you buy a house. So we're going to buy a house from... Uh, you buy a house in the market and you're going to take a mortgage out with Bank of America or Wells Fargo or something like that. You're going to have a mortgage and a note. You sign them both. Um, and then what might happen is that uh, Bank of America decides a couple of years down the road, they're going to sell your note. They're going to sell your mortgage. The terms are often used interchangeably um, to somebody else. Um, and so those of us who are note investors um, can can purchase notes, which is basically, it's the IOU. So somebody has been making mortgage payments. It's a performing note. So there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the bank or the original lender um, wants to do something else. So that's, that's it. So you can buy those notes. Iceland, Iceland. Iceland, indeed. So um, well, next year, what we'll be doing is I, I've got some boots on the ground, some friends who live in Iceland, and there's an opportunity to uh, purchase homes um, in neighborhoods in some of the, the resort towns of Iceland and offer them for sale, kind of like Airbnb, but except ours is part of a, a, a network for a locally existing resort that has um, hotel rooms, but there are families, especially now post-pandemic, who want to travel, not expose themselves to, to hotel rooms, et cetera, and, and might have you know, multiple generations. They all want to travel together. And so um, we have an opportunity to, to buy some houses um, and offer them uh, for vacation rentals under the wing of an adjacent uh, hotel so we can some piggyback operationally on their uh, concierge uh, uh, services, et cetera. So I'm putting together an investment fund which will be a pool of investors. We all go in on this together um, and it's cash flow. So it's a long-term buy and hold and it'll throw off cash flow payments. And so that's what Iceland's about. Fascinating. Cool. Okay, well, let's give Grace and everyone who spoke with her today a big hand. Um, thank you for coming in and presenting to us. We always donate 10 polio vaccines in your names to... Uh, our rotary efforts to eradicate polio worldwide. So thank you for that. Um, next week, uh, our program is the Northwest Forest Plan and Amanda Astor will be speaking to us about that. And Jim Anderson, you are introducing that program, correct? Yep, I saw a nod, that's all I needed to see. 
Um, in June, our program will be um, Megan, I, is it Walt, what's her last name, Susie? Jokes. 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 So that's right. I was mixing her up with a Megan I knew on the coast. That's why I knew that was wrong. Will be talking to us about the big picture of homelessness in our county. Uh, Susie, do you want to take two seconds and say any more than that? Yeah, sure. Um, this uh, task force just concluded um, a, a deep dive into looking into uh, resources available, especially for the 11 to 17 unaccompanied youth population. Um, it, there are a disturbing number of kids in that group uh, and looking at um, uh, what's currently available for them and what we, what the recommendations are for making things better. So she'll be presenting. Thank you. And that should be a good program too. A little bit depressing, but need to know. Uh, I want to invite all you visitors to come back to our meeting. And Mike, you could just transfer clubs. We'd gladly <laughs> take you. Maybe, you know, you need a change. You know, it's like the seven-year itch or something or the 20-some.